Hello and welcome to another edition of Zen and the Art of the Guardian Sudoku Puzzle for Sunday the 24th of January. Um, there is no Guardian today because it's a Sunday uh, and so we will be playing the Observer Sudoku. The Observer does not give a rating on difficulty. Um, it's usually in the hard, possibly medium hard range. Um, and looking at the number of digits, I might guess, hazard a guess, and say that that's probably what it's going to be. But until we get going, who knows for sure what's happening in the news today. Uh, in Russia, uh, there have been protests against the arrest of Navalny returning, uh, sorry, uh, Navalny being arrested. And um, so some opposition to Putin there. And the UK uh, has now been um, declared the worst uh, um, number of infections per capita in the world. Dreadful uh, accolade. And finally in the US, um, more revelations have appeared regarding Trump's efforts to overturn the election um, in the period just before the insurrection in the Capitol buildings. So all fun and games around the world. Never mind. Here we are looking at our Sudoku puzzle. So we're going to calm our minds. I've got a nice cup of tea with me this morning. And that will help to relax our, and focus the mind. Let's hope. So shall we begin? Um, eyes down, as they say in bingo. Um, what occurs to me first? Oh. Since this has no level, um, and I, it may turn out to be an easy level, in which case there may be some beginners, I shall very, very quickly go through the rules, but you should know them by now, I hope. Uh, in each segment, uh, there's a large grid divided into nine segments. Each segment needs one to nine digits, one to nine in each square, each of the nine squares. Each column needs one to nine, and each row needs one to nine. That is it. That is the entirety of the rules of Sudoku, but how we play the game depends on you. Right, first of all, what I like to do is just let my eyes rest on the page and see if anything looks lovely, and it does, because I can see fours. These fours seem to stand out to me. Um, the fours down this column, fours down this column here, and four across this row, meaning the only remaining square where a four cannot go is here so we put that in in large bold lettering or numbering I should say of course and uh, just wandering around the grid with my eyes I noticed that also fours are in th there's a four in this column here eliminating this square this square and this square and there's four in this column here meaning no fours can go here or here there is a four across this row here and here so blocked 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 a four has to appear here. Nowhere else. And there we are. So that got rid of a few fours for us. Um, now that we've filled in this four, uh, that will help us because there's only one remaining square on here in this uh, in this segment. And I can see that eights are coming down this column here. Eights are coming down this column here, and therefore an eight must appear here, like so. If you can hear background chatter in a language you probably don't understand, that's my neighbor in her garden chatting on a Sunday morning, as she likes to do. And I don't have soundproofing. Okay, back still in this um, segment here, I can see fives blocking this square, fives blocking this square. So a five has to come here. There are only two numbers missing here. Um, the missing numbers are one, two is missing, three, four, five, six is missing. Two and six are missing, but two clearly can't come in this central square because it's already in this row. So two is going to come here. 
and the final six will complete this section here. Excuse me, my video was interrupted by a telephone call, but I'm back focusing now. Um, so where were we? Oh yeah, I believe I've just filled in this segment here. So um, let's uh, get back to my eyes wandering around the board. Grid, I suppose it's called, technically. Um, Feel free to chat amongst yourselves or be silent. Ah, oh, of course, there's a five here. Fives run across this row, fives run across this row. There's a fairly easy to spot five here, like so. I always try to do the easy ones first. Should life be like that? Should we always attempt the easiest things first? No, probably not. Sometimes it's a good idea to attempt the difficult things first and leave the easy stuff till later. But I would suggest that in Sudoku, that's not the right approach. Um, and I would look for um, anything that's clearly um, easy to see uh, first. Excuse the motorbike noise. I can see a lot of pairs, but I generally try to avoid writing in any candidates until I really need to. I mean, you know, I feel I really need to write in the candidates because otherwise I'm not going to get anywhere and so I'm still looking to see if there are more that I can fill in without um, writing in the candidates and I'm not sure that there are I think I'm gonna have to start writing in candidates. So I'm going to assume, I'm going to take it from that, that this is a harder level puzzle. Um, as I said, the um, Guardian does not, um, uh, sorry, the Observer does not uh, mention um, what rating it gives. But I'm going to assume that here. So uh, um, I'm going to um, do some things that look kind of random, but I think I've spotted a, a, a bit of a pattern here. And so um, you may just have to bear with me and, 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 and see, but I, I'm not even sure that it is a pattern, but I feel like I've seen something. I've just seen something about sixes and threes that seem to be drawing me towards some kind of pairing here. But uh, let's just see. So if I notice that sixes in this column here runs up and uh, <coughs> does not allow any sixes here, and there's a six in this row here, it means there's a pair of sixes that we can fill in as candidates here, like so. And there are sixes along this row here and this row here, so blocking and blocking. So the only places where six is available are here and here. If we come up here then, so we know that this six extends across, these possible sixes extend across, they have to go somewhere along this row and so there are two locations here, 6 and 6. So now we're noticing that there's four numbers here, okay, there's six, sixes have to appear here. So this is actually a pair of sixes here and here. And I noticed that there are threes along here and along here in the same um, position, right? Threes are blocking this row here and blocking this row here, so that's going to be a pair of threes up here, which is useful because once you have <coughs> two numbers that are a pair like this, um, they are exclusive to each other and can't be filled in anywhere else. Now I also noticed that there's a three block, so that means six and three have to go here or here. It means there can't be any threes here, 
there's also a 3 blocking this square here. So that is, in fact, also a pair of 6 and 3 here, like so. Um, I have, hope that will come in handy later on. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, where else are we going with 6s? I noticed, okay, there are, I'll just, I'm doing this fairly randomly. I, I tend to do that. I tend not to be uh, absolutely fixed and rigid in, in the way that I go forward. If I see pairs, especially ones that are related to numbers that I'm concerned with, um, then I'll fill them in immediately. I can see that there are nines down here and nines here. So this is going to be a pair also, an exclusive pair, six and nine. This is great. When we have a pair of numbers, we know that anything else um, can't be um, filled in in those squares. So the other numbers have to appear in these squares outside. Um, oh, I've got a 2. I should have filled in previously now. So we have 2 blocking this row, 2 blocking this row, and a 2 down here. Uh, the missing numbers here, 1 is missing from this row, and 1 is already in this column, so 1 has to appear here, like so. Uh, the missing number now is 7 from this row, so we'll fill that in, 7. <coughs> Actually, it's going to be a pair as well of 7s up here and here. I'll just do that since I'm, gonna, since I'm doing the 7s at the moment. Let's just fill that in as a pair, 7 and 7 here. Um, we can see these nines. Nine is not, there's no nine in this segment here, and nine runs across this row. So we're going to have a nice pair of six and nines here. So we can fill in these two numbers as well. Um, the missing numbers are one, two, three, we don't have, four, we don't have. So three and four are missing. Uh, we can't tell which way around they go. Um, nothing up here gives us that information, and so we'll just fill in three and four as a pair like so. 4 is also a pair up here, 4s, four 4s, so these two squares have to contain a 4. Um, these missing, this missing number we must be able to find also because we have everything else, 1, 2, we don't have a 3 here, so 3 has to appear somewhere in the, either this square or this square, but we see immediately there is a 3 blocking from this column here. <coughs> and so put a 3 in here, and that has to be a 7. What's missing here? 1 and 8. 1 and 8 are the missing numbers. Anything giving us information as to which is which? No, nope. so we can just fill in that as a pair. 1 and 8, like so. Um, okay, where do we go next? Um, you know, I'm casting my eye around. There are two digits missing in this column. We should be able to find out what they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is missing, and 8 is missing. So 7 and 8 have to appear here and here. Are there any interlinking, intersecting sevens or eights? No, there aren't, so we can't tell which is which, but we'll fill that in anyway, so we know only seven or eight can go there. Um, if we consider ones now, remember this is out of the way, this is out of the way, so one, if we can take this one up this column here, we know that one has to appear either here or here. It can't come here or here, there's six or three, not there, seven or eight. One up here. There are two possible locations for one, like so. Um, if we consider the other number missing here is two, if we take this two up, like so, okay, and we notice that again it can't come here or here or here or here, so there are two possible locations for two. So what does that tell us now? We know that two has to come here or here. It means that this four doesn't go here now because we are limited to either one or two, nothing else. We can remove candidate four and it was part of a pair so we can fill it in there. There is only one number missing from here now which is 
five, I believe. And so we'll write in the number five here. Okay, um, let's keep moving. Um, I have no particular preference in which direction to go, except that I did notice something. Uh, I noticed that there's a one in this column here, <coughs> which blocks a one from being here. And there's six and three only here or here, which means that we need a one somewhere in this column here, right? And so it has to come either here or here. Now also earlier on, we noticed that one is on this left column and center column here. Can't appear here. So there's no one here. So that means that a one has to appear in this square, this square, this square. There's a one in the middle here. So we can find a pair of ones like that. Uh, on this side, we can also find a pair of ones by extending this one across and this one in the um, central column. So that's going to be a one and a one there. Um, fives go up in this column, fives go up in this column. And so five will be a pair here or here. And actually, uh, if we come back to this side, we'll see fives go up this column, fives got this column, but there is an intersecting five here. So, okay, so blocked, blocked, blocked. That has to be a five. And that was previously part of a pair of ones, so we know the one goes there. The five that we just wrote in here has to be in this location. Let's not forget to erase the candidate so we don't get confused later. This one that we filled in down here, we had a one and an eight. So we know that the one must be in this square and the eight must be in this square so they don't conflict. There is one square empty still in this column. We can find it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the number we don't have yet. So we'll fill that in. We had a pair of seven and eights here, so that must be the seven and that must be the eight. Hope you'll see this logic. It's not that difficult. There is one number missing along here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the missing number from this row. So we'll fill that in now. When we bring this, we can do a couple of things. We can fill in a couple of sevens here, okay, because there are sevens in this column sevens in this column we just filled in so sevens have to appear as part of a pair here like so we can find out these two missing numbers as well one two we don't have three four five six seven eight nine we don't have so the two missing numbers are two and nine in this column are there any twos or nines intersecting no so we'll just fill in two and nine as a pair like so Threes. <coughs> threes are blocking um, this column down here, like so. So a three is going to be a pair here or here. Okay, now on this, back to this side, don't get too hung up in one area. When you see something else, keep you know looking around. Now threes are blocking this column here, right? So that means that threes are going to appear here or here. And what does that tell us? It means that this has to be a three. Okay, you can see that if you look around, you'll see actually there's a three blocking here, three blocking here, a three blocking here. And uh, we already know that six or three has to appear in either of these two squares. And so uh, we know that because there is no availability of a three in this row here for this segment or this segment, and there's only one location here. So that has to be a three, that has to be a six. Uh, okay, um, the sevens are blocking here. You may be wondering why I don't come back and do this. Well, I, I will in a second. I just kind of see things and I think, well, while I'm doing that, I shall continue. Um, I've noticed that eights here, okay, is a row, eights in this column, and so eight is the 
<coughs> missing number here and if we go bring the 8 across we are extending from this row, this row, there's an 8 up here only one location for 8 it has to go there like so uh, we must know what this missing number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's 9 missing number is 9, are there any intersecting 9's? nope, so we'll write 9 as the candidate um, ok let's come back to here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is missing um, ok so there's an intersecting 6 along here and an intersecting 6 up here so blocked and blocked um, so there are 3 possible locations for 6 I'm gonna that's the only missing number um, I'm gonna hold off because I have a feeling we'll just stick to the pairs for the moment because um, I have a feeling we you know numbers that are greater than pairs we might not even need to do uh, 2 and 7 are missing from here let's fill in 2 and 7 from this segment and now that we've done that we see that this 2 cannot exist here and this is part of a, and a pair of 2 and 1 so the 2 is going to have to be here and that's going to be a 1 uh, our missing number here is 1 from this row and you can extend these along to see that's 1 um, we know that 1 was a part of a pair here and 1 here which can't exist so the 1 is going to be there the 7 we now know is here like so see it wasn't necessary to fill in the 6's didn't need to do it could have done could have filled in uh, 666 right like the devil's symbolism uh, in those three squares um, but we didn't and we didn't need to because now we can see that clearly remember this is a pair two or nine only six can't come here so that's the six that's the three up in this square that's the six uh, that's the nine the only remaining um, number from that segment um, let's keep let's move back again uh, this is the only place that's not really filled in much so what do we have one do we have twos no we don't have Two, so twos are intersecting along here and they come here, here, here three, four, five, six, sevens, how about sevens? sevens, sevens are not allowed here but are allowed in other places, okay alright, uh, so now we're gonna, we are gonna have more than two candidates I guess, let me just make sure I haven't seen anything else that's really obvious, this of course I have uh, this six that's filled in now course can't come here that has to be the six that has to be the nine back across again this nine can't exist here it has to be there so that's the two this nine here nope that's the nine that's the seven back across that's the seven that's the one so we didn't even need to go higher than pairs here the missing number here is two uh, that three can't be there three has to appear here that's the two that's the two that's the seven um, what do we have left down here six three four okay the four take this four down four can't be here so that must be four leaving that as three back up again that can't be three that's the three that's the six back down again six has to appear here the nine has to appear here you'll see that simply by using pairs I think it was a medium to a hard level something like that um, has as quantified or classified or rated by the Guardian that's my guess um, but um, we didn't even need to fill in numbers you know candidates that were greater than pairs just simply by filling in pairs managed to solve the puzzle no special techniques necessary just looking around the board and constantly looking for pairs and eliminating those um, that you can eliminate as you go along um, maybe that's a, a way to approach life is to solve problems as they come each as you find one try to solve that problem try to take a fairly simple approach to solving problems don't overthink things and get things so complicated that you end up in a, a mass of a sea of uh, confusion that's a nice cliche that I'll finish with today's Sudoku on Thank you very much. Tomorrow is another working week.
day if you have such a thing as a working week in this pandemic. I tend not to. Um, thank you very much, and back to the Sudo Guardian Sudoku tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye for today.